I couldn't talk to anybody. But I had a little group of students in the scripture union. I could talk to those one because they were in my mathematics class. And since I taught them mathematics, I thought I can well teach them the scripture. Apart from that, I could not talk to anybody. But one day, I just realized, ah, what's happening to you? Do you know your name? I said, of course I do. What's your name? I said, William. What does William mean? Somebody went into the dictionary of names and he said, defender of the faith. And the defender of the faith, mute, and not say anything. But one day, I said, on the fear, no more. I talked to myself. I said, all oh, the cowardice, no more. And then I got up. And I started talking to people and I saw somebody that was paralyzed. And the mother was dancing around a pot turned upside down. What is this? What is this? this is my God. You call this a God? Yes. This pot yes. turned upside down? Uh -uh. My fathers have been serving this before I was born. And I asked the woman, I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm worshipping my God. I said, this is your God? The pot turned upside down? He said, yes. I said, okay. See what your God has done to your child. See what your God has done to your son. Paralyzed. Six years of age. had never moved. I said, I will pray to my God. He will make your child rise up. Remember, I didn't have all that boldness before, but now I am the whosoever. And so I said, take off that pot, smash it on the ground, destroy it. He said, what? I said, I will pray for your child. Your child will get up. She said, pray for my child first, and then I will break the pot. What if I break the pot and my child does not rise up? And then I've lost on both sides. I said, Madam, I'm a teacher. Uh -huh. And I said, Teacher, the students don't tell me the curriculum I teach. Oh, really? I decide the curriculum I teach. Oh. So you break the pot, and I will pray for your son, and your son will walk again. And are you assuring me of this? Yes. You are sure? You break the pot. See? And I pray for your son. If you know who I am, you would not tell me this. But you have come with a command. Yes. I've come with the power of the Most High God. And I will obey. And when I pray in His name, your son will walk again. Should I put my faith in you? Put your faith. Or in whatever God you say you God, serve. The Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. 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 And so she took the pot, and the pot was empty. There was nothing in her but an empty God. much date on the ground and then I turned to the boy I didn't even touch the boy I said boy in the name of Jesus rise up and walk
And by the way, I didn't need to understand their language. There was no interpreter. It was not a crusade. I was speaking English, and the boy did not understand the English, but I still, because it's not the boy that will confirm the word. He doesn't need to understand. It's God that will confirm the word, and God understands English perfectly well. And he stood up like I'm standing up. And he began to walk what he had never done before. Why did God do that? Not because of me, who am I? Because whosoever. I is dawning a path unknown and un, un, untried to fill me with foreboding and I now no hand to guide but he who walked beside me all through the yesteryear whatever may betide me has promised to be near another year with Jesus ah then no dread I know his love is ever precious however the winds may blow even when the storm is fiercest in him my soul may my rest and find sweet peace and comfort upon his loving breast. Another year to trust him, yes, I can trust him still, who never yet has failed me. As I have sought his will, his rod and staff he gave it. To me my strength and stay, and tenderly he led it along the homeward way. Another year to love him whom I have loved so long. Another year to praise him. In glad, triumphant song, whatever the future holdeth of sorrow, toil, or pain, his precious love endure it forevermore the same. Another year with Jesus. I thank thee, Lord, today for thy unfailing presence along life's rugged way. Guide me, O blessed Redeemer. Teach me to do thy will and thine own perfect purpose. In me each day fulfill, which I take. One, two, three, and six.
six. Six. Want to go? Chapter 19 Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be. That the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus, therefore, saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. 
Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bare record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, A bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they pierced. And after this Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about an hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus, and wound it in linen clothes with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulchre, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand.
administrations from regions, states, and nations across the world. in sin, but Jesus took me in, and came a little light from heaven filled my soul. He filled my soul with love, and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. A little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our troubles, Cry, and serve by and by. 
Praise the Lord. That is too small. I said, Praise the Lord. It's testimony time. And in Job chapter 9, verse 10, the Bible tells us our God, which doeth great things, past finding out, yea, and wonders without number, is here. He have been doing wonders in our midst. I want to listen to testimonies tonight. Let's listen to the first testifier from the Alpha location. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, I said praise the Lord. I am Dr. Monijos Sunday, a consultant family physician with sub-specialization in critical care medicine and emergency medicine. I'm here to introduce one of our brothers whom the Lord has done something for, and you are going to listen to him now, his brother Olabiyi Sesson. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God because he healed me. He opened up my blocked heart some 15 months ago. I want to thank God. Uh, it started uh, on 29th of August. Sunday precisely, we were having the August edition of the GCK. And uh, suddenly, I, I started feeling I couldn't breathe again. I was dying. I, my life was heaving away. I had to tell my brethren, please take me to the hospital quickly. And I was taken to a nearby uh, hospital. They couldn't help. I was referred to a Kitty State uh, Teaching Hospital. They couldn't help. They called me that it was beyond what they could do, that if I could try Abua, that's Ave Babala Multisystem Hospital. I was taken to that place in ambulance, hooked up to the oxygen, and when I got there, they were reluctant. They didn't want to take me. They said I should have come about three day, uh, three hours, but it was three days after time, at that time. But eventually, they took me in. I had to be uh, uh, stabilized, so they had to take me to the ICU, the intensive care unit there, and I was there for about two, uh, two weeks. They were rescuing me, doing everything to make sure that I was stable because I was to go for an, uh, 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 an operation of the heart. So after two weeks, I, I came out from the ICU. My picture when I came out was, that, that's my picture, when I came out from the ICU, and I was stabilized at that time. But the doctor told me that my case had a blocked heart and I should still go on for the operation. So two weeks later, I, they asked me to come. It was another GCK, that September edition. On Sunday, they, they asked me to come to the hospital and I was there on 26th Sunday uh, uh, for the, uh, for the, uh, to, to wash me so that I could have the operation the next day. And uh, when I got there, I had the privilege of connecting with the GCK uh, message of our Father in the Lord, and that title, I, I cannot forget it. Jesus, yesterday, today, and forever. And when I listened to it, the man of God said, what Jesus did for when he was alive, he could still do it now. And he encouraged us when he wanted to lead the prayer that we should not open our eyes yet. Just tell yourself, you are healed now, and then you open your eyes, and then I believe on the hospital bed. Then in the evening, the, uh, the nurses came and gave me the apron for the operation the next day. So the, early in the morning, they came to wheel me to the theater, the cat lab. When I got there, they said I would go through a test again to see whether the operation, I mean, the, what they will do. And they placed me on the operation table, and I was there. They did the angiography. That's the, to, they wanted to look at my heart and see what was there. Lo and behold, everything was clear, completely clear. The doctor said, ah, what happened? Didn't you do it? The other doctor were arguing inside. Yeah, the doctor said, we did the test. The blood confirmed it. The doctor even said, the Agua doctor said, he said, there are times God, something, God does things that you cannot explain. I said, this is divine solution, because that was the divine solution Jesus gave at that time. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God. I want to thank my Father and the Lord. Thank you because you are able to representing the Lord in our midst. Thank you, sir. Jam your hands together for Christ. 
This is just this is just to whet your appetite for tonight. Tonight. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. But bless your name because you are a good God, a great God. Gracious and glorious. You called us to yourself. So you can bless us. Pray, Lord, you open our eyes to see wondrous things out of your word. Bless your people. Lift off your people. Answer the prayers of your people. Confirm your word in every life. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please sit down. We're talking about prayer. Prayer is common in every church. We pray to God. We expect answers from God. We have good examples, great examples of prayer. In the Bible, Abraham prayed. And God answered. On beyond that, Moses prayed. Beyond that, we know that David prayed. Samuel prayed unto God. You remember Daniel was a man of prayer too. As we go through the Old Testament, we see the people of God praying and receiving answers from God. Coming to the New Testament, Jesus prayed. And in the morning, he went to the mountainside. A solitary place. So he could have a solitary position, preparation, so there will be no disturbance to his prayer. Then the disciples prayed. Going through the acts of the apostles. Peter prayed. John prayed. The other disciples, apostles prayed. In fact, it says when they prayed, the place was shaking. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they went forth in grace and power. And then James tells us, he says the virtual prayer of a righteous man avails very much. Everybody has a desire to pray effectively. And so the disciples came to Jesus, they said, teach us how to pray. That was a given, what has given us the Lord's prayer. You have it recorded in Matthew. You have it recorded in Luke. We're taking the prayer in Matthew. It gives us a model of prayer. It gives us a pattern of prayer. It says when we pray, here is how to pray. Some people pray the prayer every Sunday. Other people take it for a pattern to pray. In the Acts of the Apostles, we don't find the repetition word by word of this prayer. And so it is given to us so that we can pattern our prayer according to the Lord's prayer. The title of my message today is Praying the Lord's Prayer Effectually. Look at the prayer. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. After this manner. 
ఇయొక్క He goes on to say in verse in the next verse. He says thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Then he tells us in verse 11. He says give us this day a daily bread. The first part verses 9 and 10. He is with God. The honor of God, the kingdom of God, the will of God. The second part now comes to man. Teaching us that in our prayer, God must be number one. And we take the subservient position. And so as it comes to man, he continues the prayer, the petition. He says, give us this day our daily bread. Then he goes on to say, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Then he says, lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. That's the part that relates to man. Beginning the prayer with God. Looking at the needs of man. He concludes the prayer by coming back to God again. Again. And he says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Because this is God now, the eternal God, from everlasting to everlasting. As he concludes the prayer, he says, I'm not only praying here on earth. I want the privilege to be with God forever and ever. And at the end of the prayer, he puts an Amen. This is the prayer we are going to look at as the, as the master prayer. Number one is talking to God in heaven. He is a creator. He is a redeemer. By believing of the Lord Jesus Christ and the sons and the daughters of God. And so we can say our father is not our father on earth. God is everywhere. You see on earth you see everything being done but heaven is a special dwelling place. So Jesus said, Our Father who is in heaven. And then he comes to man. He addresses the need of man unto God. He said, give us. We can only have what he gives us. If we are caught off from God the Father, we are poor. We abject poverty. We have nothing sufficient for us here on earth. But where is the God in heaven? And we can say, give us. We can say, forgive us. We can say, lead us not. We can say, deliver us from evil. And then we can give the glory to him. 
After we have received from the Lord, don't just stand up, wipe our mouths, and then go away. We show gratitude. We acknowledge, we acknowledge the kingdom of the Father. We acknowledge the power of the Father. We acknowledge the glory of the Father. We say now and ever thine is the kingdom. Now and ever thine is the power. Now and ever thine is the glory. Look at that prayer. Our father. Not just my father. You're not the only child of God. We have children of God in different churches. In different different countries. And so we have that relationship that we can say it's not just my father, our father who is in heaven. And you will see that the prayer is talking about the plurality of the family of God. We come through the same way. Through the same redemption. Through the same Christ, we come out of our past and we come in relationship of peace with the living God. Our Father who is in heaven, give us this day. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us. We must have that concept and understand that we with other people were in the family of God. As we look at the prayer, let's divide the prayer to three parts. Number one is the pattern and model of an effective prayer. How do I pray in such a way that God will answer? Jesus shows us the way. How can I pray with confidence? How can I pray with expectation? He shows us the way for effectively praying unto God. Number one, the pattern and model of an effective prayer. When we come before God, after glorifying Him, after exalting Him, we have to present a petition before the Lord. Number two is the petition and the meaningfulness of an effectual prayer. The petition will bring Look at the people that prayed in the Bible. Bible had definite petition they brought before God. Then at the end of the prayer, we acknowledge the power and the majesty of the Heavenly Father. The petition that we have brought has now been answered. And we give glory to God. The everlasting potentate. We acknowledge his King of Kings and his Lord of Lords. Let's look at it one by one. Number one is the pattern and the model of an effective prayer. Again, remember what Jesus said. The Father which art in heaven. That section of the prayer has three important parts. Number one, we're looking at the, uh, the, the, the presentation we have before the Lord. The prayer to our Heavenly Father. And then number two, there is the pursuit 
of the father's kingdom and number three there is the promptness of to the father's will or to the father's will number one is the prayer to our heavenly father there are people who pray to angels Jesus says no. Yes, Allah, there are people who pray directly to Jesus. He says in that day you will ask me nothing. Ask the Father in my name. And so it's a prayer we are praying to the Father. We are saying our Father. Is God Father to everyone on earth? No. The Jews thought because they were Jews, they were children of Abraham, automatically they were children of God. They confronted Jesus Christ. They said, We have one father, and he's God. Jesus said, No. He said, You're of your father, the devil. And the deeds of your father will you do. He's a murderer from the beginning. And he's a liar and a father of liars. How then can we really say a father who art in heaven? He has told us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He tells us in verse 16. In the latter part, he says that he wants to be our God. He says there's no agreement for the temple of God and idols. No agreement between darkness and light. He says for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God. God and this shall be my people. What do I do? What do you do? What can man do? So that he can effectively say, A father, watch in heaven. Verse 17 tells us, He says, Wherefore come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. I will receive you. Then in verse 18, he says, Then I will be a father unto you. We come out of darkness. We come out of our past life. We come out of sin and evil. We come away from our idols. We come out of everything that's a Gaze the life and the revelation of God. We come through Jesus Christ. We come into the family. We come out. We come through. We come into. Coming to the family of God. We come out of sin. Out of evil. Out of every bad thing, wrongdoing that we have been doing. We come out. We come through. We come through the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't come with our good works. We don't come with our good name. We have nothing good. Man is born in sin. And the only way to the Heavenly Father is Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Come out. Come through. Come into. We come into the kingdom. 
And we come into the family of God. And he says, I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Number one, their, our prayer is to the Heavenly Father. Number two, it tells us the pursuit of the Father's kingdom. As come back to the prayer in Matthew chapter 6. It tells us in verse 10. It says thy kingdom come. The kingdom of God. There are three aspects of the kingdom of God. There's the external kingdom. His king, his ruler. Over the whole earth. And Jesus Christ upholds the whole universe. We can see the orderliness. We can see the control. The God who created the universe has not led the world to chance. He controls everything. God of all the earth and a God of all flesh. God, our Father, has an external kingdom. Number two, has an internal kingdom. Jesus said the kingdom of God is in you. And the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It is righteousness. It is peace. It is joy in the Holy Ghost. External kingdom. That's already there. Internal kingdom. When you invite Christ into your heart, Christ is king. And the king enters your heart. And your life comes under the control of that king. It's a prayer you have been praying. That the kingdom of God will come internally into you. When the kingdom comes, it starts in a small way. And as we read the Bible, study the word of God, as we yield more and more to God, and it brings his nature to operate in our lives. And he leads us into the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Thy kingdom come. After you are saved and born again, that internal kingdom expanding and going deep and higher internal kingdom number one external kingdom number two internal kingdom number three eternal kingdom that has not come that's why the church is praying. Lord, when are you coming? When are you establishing your eternal kingdom? And then, that's why the disciples were asking, would you bring the kingdom to Israel at this time? And he said it is not for you to know. The time or the season that the father has in his son. He said, but you go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And in due time. God's appointed time that eternal kingdom will come. When that kingdom comes, the devil will be bound and put in the bottomless pit. When that kingdom comes, Christ will reign without a rival. When that kingdom comes, all the wild animals will lose their poison 
and the snake and the, and, the, and the lions and the lamb will eat together in the same place. But today as we pray for the kingdom, we're also pursuing the kingdom. And we pursue the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. If we pray, thy kingdom come, and we do nothing to speed the coming of that kingdom. To tell the world around us about the king. To tell the people around us to yield to the king. Our prayer does not have action that backs it up. And so we have the pursuit of the Father's kingdom. As he continues to teach us the prayer, he now goes to the next point. And he says, Thy will be done. On earth, as it is in heaven, he says, while we're pursuing the kingdom, there is the promptness in doing the Father's will. He has left us here on earth. We are saved. If there were nothing to do after salvation, at the point of salvation, he will take us to heaven. But he has left us here. So we can pursue the coming of the kingdom. He has left us here. So we can demonstrate doing the will of the Father in heaven. How are we to do the will of God? Because he says they will be done. In earth. As it is in heaven. We can refer to the people in the past. The people in the old covenant. How they did the will of God. Some of them did the will of God partially. Some of them did the will of God selectively. Some of them did the will of God temporarily. It wasn't their permanent state of life. So Jesus said, doing the will of God partially, not acceptable. Doing the will of God selectively, that's not acceptable. Doing the will of God, a kind of temporarily, I do it today, I'll do my will tomorrow, not acceptable. He said, this is how to pray. This is what to pray for. Thy will be done here on earth as it is done in heaven. Who are the people doing the will of God in heaven? The angels are doing the will of God in heaven. In Psalm 103, reading from verse 19, Psalm 103 verse 19 It tells us the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens Prabhu. and his kingdom rules over all. And then he says in verse 20 Bless the Lord ye his angels that excel in strength do his commandments. Hacking and listening and observing and obeying the voice of his word. We look at the angels in heaven. They do the will of God promptly. 
దాన్ని ఆలస్యం చేయకూడదు పరిశుద్ధ we don't wait for all the people that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven promptly paralokamlo devun yokka chittam ela jaravechabadutundo bhoomi meeda manushulu edala aa vidhanga sampurnanga neravechabadali anything he commands aina ed agnapiste anything he sends us for to do aina deni kosam mannani nemistharo angels do the will of god promptly and we too that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven ade nikkachena reethilo doothalu paramandu jariginchinatlu bhoomi meeda manam kuda aina chittanna laaguna neraverchali angels do the will of god without partiality doothalu devuni chittanni pakshapatham lekunda jarigistunnaru without selection ye vidhamaina empikal lekunda some people yes i'll do the will of i like that i'll do it. i don't like that i will not do it bhoomi meeda unna manam aithe kondara aithe ishtam aithe devuni chittam cheyadam ishtam kaagapothe devuni chittam we are not to debate the word of god manamu devun yokka vakyanni vivadaspadam cheyakudu we are not to select the one we want to do manam em cheyalo maname daan empika cheskokudu angels don't select doothala vidhang empika cheskodalle angel do say i like that i don't like that doothal idu naaku ishtam adaitha naaku ishtam ledu andalu ledu angels subserve and they do the will of god with impartiality దూతలు పాటించినట్లుగా మనం కూడా పక్షపాతం లేకుండా పాటించినప్పుడు సో వి గివ్ అవర్ సెల్ఫ్ టు ది విల్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ తద్వారా మనల్ని మనం దేవుని చిత్తానికి సమర్పించుకుంటాం గుడ్ సెంట్ ఇంచెస్ ఫర్ సోడోమ్ అండ్ గోమోరా సోడోమ్ ఆ గోమోరాకు దేవుడు తన దూతల్ని పంపించాడు టెల్ హిమ్ దెమ్ దిస్ ఇస్ వాట్ యు డూ ఇదిగో మీరు చేయాలని చెప్పాడు This is negative I don't like to run an errand like this. ఇది వెత్రిక్తంగా ఉంది ఈ పని చేయడం మాకు ఇష్టం లేదని వారు అనలేదు. I don't like going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. సోదోమ గోమోరాలు నాశనం చేయడం మాకు ఇష్టం లేదు అనలేదు. No argument. వివాదం లేదు. No debate. ఏ విధమైన వాదన లేదు. No reasoning in their own carnal way. సొంత ఆలోచన విధానంతో దేవునితో వాదన చేయడం లేదు. God has spoken. దేవుడు సెలవిచ్చాడు and the angels run and they do the will of god దూతలు పరిగెట్టుకుంటూ వెళ్ళి దేవుని చిత్తమును నెరవేరుస్తున్నారు when god has spoken to us దేవుడు మనతో మాట్లాడినప్పుడు and he said this is what you do ఇది నువ్వు చేయాలని చెప్పినప్పుడు i will be done on us as it is done in heaven పరమందు మీ చిత్తం ఎలా జరుగుతుందో ప్రభు ఆ భూమి మీద కూడా మీ చిత్తం అలాగే నెరవేర్చబడాలి it tells us ఆయన మనకు చెప్తున్నారు only the people that do the will of god will abide forever దేవుని చిత్తమును జరిగించు వారే నిత్యము నిలుచుదురు జీసస్ వాస్ ప్రీచింగ్ సమ్ వేర్ యేసు ఒక చోట బోధిస్తున్నారు సో పీపుల్ కేమ్ టు హిమ్ ప్రజలు ఆయన చెంతకు వచ్చారు హి సెడ్ యువర్ మదర్ అండ్ యువర్ బ్రదర్స్ అండ్ సిస్టర్స్ ఆర్ లుకింగ్ ఫర్ యు యేసు మీ తల్లి సోదరులు సోదరులు మీ కోసం వచ్చి ఎదురు చూస్తున్నారని చెప్పారు జీసస్ రివీల్డ్ ఇ నెవర్ టు బి ఫర్గాటెన్ ప్రిన్సిపల్ యేసు ఎప్పటికీ మరిచిపోబడని సూత్రాన్ని అక్కడ బయలుపరిచారు హూ ఇస్ మై మదర్ నా తల్లి ఎవరండి హూ ఆర్ మై బ్రదర్స్ నా సోదరులు ఎవరు then he pointed to his disciples aina sishyulu vaipu cheyi chupinchi he pointed to those who are born again తిరిగి జన్మించిన వారి వైపు చేయి చూపించారు pointed to those who are walking in the way of righteousness నీతి మార్గములో నడుస్తున్న వారి వైపు చేయి చూపించి these who do the will of god are my mother and my brothers and my sisters దేవుని చిత్తమును జరిగించు వీరే నా తల్లి సోదరులు సోదరీలు అన్నాడు a father మన తండ్రి ఉచచిన్ హేవన్ పరలోకమందున్నవాడు హాలెలూయా honored exalted be thy name kana parachabadi hechinchabadi unna mee naamam avunnathi ani pondali the kingdom come mee rajyam raavali the will be done on earth as it is done in heaven mee chittam paralokamlo neraverchabadutunnatlu bhoomi meeda neraverchabadali it brings us to the next part of the prayer aa tarvata prarthanalo mari oka bhaganiki manam vachestunnam this is point number 2 now idi ippudu rendava amsham point number 2 is the petition 
Amen. and the meaningfulness in an effective prayer. When, when we come to pray, there must be a definite petition. When Abraham prayed, he had a definite petition. When Moses prayed, there was a definite petition. And when David prayed, there was definite petition. When those apostles in the Acts of the Apostles prayed, they had definite petition before the Lord. We too must have definite petition when we pray. And, and the petition must be meaningful. You must understand what you are praying for. Heaven must understand what you are praying for. Petition and meaningfulness in an effectual prayer. Man has need. The Father God in heaven can supply the need. As we look at the petition, we look at it in three perspectives. Number one, the petition for bread for the whole man. Number two, the pardon for debts through the wholesome mercy. And then number three, number three the protection from temptation. Protection from Temptation. Look at the petition the Lord has given us that we can ask the Father. Number one is the petition for bread for the whole man. The whole man is made of three parts. Like God is said, like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. There is the Holy Trinity. There is the Human Trinity. We have the Spirit, we have the Soul, we have the Body. If the body is well fed, but the soul is famishing, and the spirit is dying of hunger. The whole man has not been fed. And when he says, give us this day our daily bread. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 11. Give us this day. Our daily bread is talking about bread made available to the whole man. We human beings we think about the bread on the table the vegetables and the, all the things that will give nutrients to our body. What I take orange. When when I take apple. apple when I take the broccoli. When I take the rice, that doesn't feed my spirit. It doesn't feed my soul. But Give me the bread for the whole man. The material provision that I put in my mouth. For the body. And Jesus said, man shall not live by that bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall man live. That one is for my soul. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. If any man eats this bread, he will live forever. 
the bread on the table cannot make you live forever. He said your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they are dead. I am the bread from heaven. So they said I can't understand this. And some people whatever they don't understand they throw out why don't you wait? He said, the word I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. So we are asking bread for the body. Bread for the soul. Bread for the spirit. So that the whole man, spirit, soul and body will grow together. And on one of these days, the body will die. And the body will be buried. Remember the words I speak unto you. The spirit and their life. Our soul and spirit will now go to God. By the strength of the bread of life, word of life, the living waters that you have taken in. And so we need to pray every time. Give us this day. Our daily bread. God has given us the bread physical. The bread natural. This is the farm. Somebody has to bring it from the farm and bring it to the market. Give us this day. You are not going to sit in your house and then the bread will drop into your mouth. He's giving us the bread. He's giving us the air to breathe. He's not going to do the in and out of the air for you. You do that. He's giving us. Take it. He's provided the water to drink. You must drink. Give us this dear daily bread. He's giving us the living bread. The word of God. It's in the Bible. He has given us. You must take it. You must read it. You must analyze it. You must meditate on it. You must apply it to yourself. He has given us the spiritual bread. He has given us Christ. It's the bread that fills our spirit. He has given us the Holy Ghost. But you have to receive. You have to take. You have to believe. And then the benefit of the bread will be available for you. Number two there. It tells us about the pardon of debts through wholesome mercy. He promises forgiveness. There are two sides to the forgiveness. There is the foreigner coming from outside. He has not been in the family. He's a sinner. He's a rebellious person. He wakes up. He says, I am a sinner. I feel condemned. I feel guilty. And he says, I will arise and go to God. He comes. He says, forgive me my sin. He comes as a foreigner. There's a second part of forgiveness. Already you are a member of the family of God. You're saved. You have the joy of salvation. If I die, I am going to heaven. But sometimes like children at home, sometimes they are slow to do what we tell them to do. 
Sometimes they go their own way. Sometimes we have to ask them, have you done that thing I told you to do? And the child has to say, I am sorry daddy, I am sorry mommy. Please forgive me, I'll go and do it now. Members of the family of God. We're still children of God. We're still born again. We still have Christ living in us. But sometimes he told us to do something. And we're slow. And we delay. And then God comes to challenge us. Have you done what I told you to do? He's asking us not as a foreigner. Not as a sinner, not as somebody outside the kingdom, is asking us as a member of the family. And we have not done what he told us to do. And as a member of the family of God will say, I am sorry, forgive me. Initial forgiveness. Just coming into the kingdom. And he forgives us. But then while we're in the kingdom. You do something that your conscience is saying does not right. Because I'm a child of God. Right or wrong. I'm going on in my way. And we pile up guilt and condemnation in our hearts. And our fellowship is affected. Relationship, yes. Father, son, relationship, yes. Bridegroom, bride, relationship, yes. Because we have settled that when we came into the kingdom. What are you going to do with, with relationship without fellowship? And God says, you have done this, you have done this. I have somewhat against you. You have left your first love. And since repent, that means then we come back to God. Thank you, my Father. We are praying to the Heavenly Father. We're not praying to the judge. He's judge to the world. His father to us. He's creator to his creatures. He is his father to us. We come to the father. Forgive us our debts. As we forgive those that trespass against us. Look at this man that was forgiven. And then as he came out, he saw another servant like himself. He says, pay me what you owe me. Oh, that one said, be patient with me, I will pay you all. He said, no, pay me now. He cast him into the prison. His fellow servant servant saw what he had done. He reported to the Lord. And the Lord said, you wicked servant. I forgive you that much. Shouldn't you have forgiven your fellow servant? He wants us to forgive those who offend us. He wants the husband to forgive the wife. But many people in the world, mm -mm, I will not forgive my wife. That's what causes separation. That's what causes divorce. Members of the church who offend the pastor. And the pastor said, forever, forever, I will not forgive that member. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those that trespass against us. Our neighbors will offend us. 
they will step on our toes. Some of them do it intentionally. Some of them do it ignorantly. And yet we we'll forgive. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Look at number three there. Number three is protection from temptation of warish messengers. There are temptations in the world. There are temptations in every city. There are things that attract us so as to attack us. They hide the attacking aspect and they reveal the attractive aspect. They attract us to attack us. There are things in the world. They beckon on us to brutalize us. They hide the brutality that they have in mind. They beckon, to say, come, come. And you think they have good intention. They beckon to brutalize. There are things in the world that call, that call us. They call us to crush us. They hide the aspect of crushing us. They just smile and they say, come. But God knows their intention. We don't see the coming attack. God sees the coming attack. We don't see the coming brutalization, but he sees the brutalization. We only see them calling. We cannot see the crushing that they have. So we pray to the God who sees beyond the attraction. To the God who sees beyond the beckoning. To the God who sees beyond the call. That's why we say our fa my father knows. Because he knows all things. He knows things present. He knows things future. We say God I'm ignorant. I'm blind. I cannot see the intention of the one calling in me. And so I pray. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. God called Abraham. And he came out of the awe of the Chaldees. He says, I'm going to bless you. You will be a blessing to the rest of the world. Lord was his nephew. And Lord said, if it's good for Abraham, it's good for me. If Abraham is going to be a blessing, I want to join him and share in that blessing. And so they went together. Abraham had wife. Lord had wife. Even had children before Abraham. And Abraham had cattle. Abraham had servants. Lord had servants at cattle. Only there was little misunderstanding between Lord's uh, cattle's rearers and Abraham's cultural uh, errors. Abraham said, Abraham, there be no quarrel. Abraham, if you want to choose any part of the land, you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Or you prefer the left, I'll go to the right. Lord did not see counseling, guidance. He looked at Sodom. 
He looked at the well watered ground. And since Abraham has given me the first choice, this is what I choose. Lead us not into temptation. The place he chose was a place of temptation. We're told he built his tent near Sodom. Sodom by and by, he got into Sodom. By and by, he was a vine to sit at the gate of Sodom. The choices were made. The decisions were made. They may attract us. They might later attack us. They might beckon on us. They might later brutalize us. They might call us. They, can, they may later crush us. You know the story. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed. Lot did not take out one cattle, one sheep. All his cattle rearers burnt up. He even lost his wife that became a pillar of salt. That's why Jesus said, We're people of history. We know the past. We know a bit of the present. We know nothing of the future. So, lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. They will deliver us. We come to the third part of the prayer. The third part of the prayer is talking about the power and the majesty of the everlasting potentate. The potentate is the king of kings and the lord of lords. The potent is the one that rules over the whole universe. The potent is the one that has all power, both in heaven and on earth. We want to recognize the power and the majesty of the everlasting potentate. Now, we want to realize that now. We don't want to wait like Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel revealed the truth to Nebuchadnezzar. And Shedak, Meshach, and Abednego demonstrate the truth, revelation unto Nebuchadnezzar. But Nebuchadnezzar remained the natural man. Warning came to Nebuchadnezzar that if you continue like this, God is taking record. Heaven will come on you and you will be turned to an animal. And Daniel said, Get my counsel. Daniel Receive my guidance. He didn't yield. Twelve months after, Nebuchadnezzar looked at Babylon. Said, this is the Babylon I built by the might of my power. And the voice of the watchers came from heaven. To you it is said you'll be driven away from man. You know the story, he ate grass like animal. He nails grew like the claws of the birds. Eventually he came to his senses. 
We don't have to go through that. Christ has shown us who God is. He is our Father. He is our Provider. He is the lover of our soul. Before anything comes on us like Nebuchadnezzar, we can say, Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We need to understand and we walk in that knowledge because of the power, the majesty of the everlasting potentate. Look at those three things there. Number one is the possessor of the everlasting kingdom. The possessor of the everlasting kingdom. There is the evangelical kingdom. We are born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There is the evangelical kingdom. There is the earthly kingdom. As long as we are here, the kingdom belongs to the Lord. Number three, there is the everlasting kingdom. We are be partakers of the earthly kingdom. By redemption, by being born again, we become part of the evangelical kingdom. And when Christ shall come and we establish that everlasting kingdom, our names are written in the book of life. Forever and forever will be with the Lord. Number two, there is the potentate ways, eternal power. The God we serve has ultimate power. The God we serve has or irresistible power. Nobody has ever resisted the power of God and has succeeded. We have come to submit to that power. When Christ rose from the dead, before he left, he said, All power on earth and in heaven is given unto me. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, with that ultimate power, with that all sufficient power, I am with you until the end of the world. And he has given that part of that power to us. He says, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Serpents have power, scorpions have power. The power of Christ he has given you is higher and greater than the power of serpents and scorpions. And he says he gives us power over the power of the enemy. We are power greater than the power of the enemy. Many times we are ignorant of what we have. We are knowledgeable of what they have. Many times we overlook what we have. We emphasize what they have. We go around my enemy is powerful. My enemy is mighty. No. You didn't look at the power he has given you. You belittled your own power. Sometimes you look at you, you look at somebody. He has strength and 
power. But he is looking at the power of the other person. And in his carnal comparison. In his common comparison. In his callous comparison. Says, others have power. I don't have power. I give unto your power above the power of all your enemies. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Look at Moses in the midst of those magicians in Egypt. Look at the one rod in the hand of that Moses. That power that he has in that single rod was about the power of all the magicians and the army and everybody in Egypt. You say, I wish I had a rod. You don't have a rod, but you have the word. And you have the blood. What Moses did by the rod, we do by the blood and the word. And he overcame him. But the blood of the Lamb and the word and the testimony in their mouth. You have power. Greater than the power in the world. Number three is the perpetuity of his excellent glory. Is the Lord of glory. Is the God of glory. And we say. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. How long? I said how long? Some people say the first century Christians oh, they had glory and power. But we, the church of today, the 21st century, some people say, I wish I lived at the time of the first century. Is God weaker today than he was at that time? If the Almighty is the all sufficient poorer today than it was at that time. The same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And why did Christ come? Christ came to bring many sons to glory. To bring you to glory. Always looking down. Look up. Always looking back. Look forward. The Lord has come to glory. Bring you to glory. Shame gone. Condemnation gone. Weakness gone. Power. Shakti. Kingdom. Rajyam. Glory. Mahima. For you. Mikosa. And when Christ will come, He will come from glory. To come and take His people here on earth. And He will take you to everlasting glory. That's the prayer He tells us to pray. That's the prayer he has taught us. That's the prayer he will answer. The prayer by the petitioner. The petition by the person praying. And the power with which he will answer our prayer. Today he will answer you by power. He will answer you by full provision. He will answer you and bring glory into your life. Glory in your family. Glory all 
around you. You walk majestically and confidently through life. Experiencing His power, His grace, His glory every day of your life. And on the final day, when the dead in Christ shall rise and we who are alive will be caught up together with them in the air you will enter the everlasting kingdom there will be crowns on your head there will be stars in your crown you will shine forever and ever like the firmament of heaven Glory today. Glory tomorrow. Glory forever. Let's rise up and pray. The Lord brings glory to every life. Say, Lord, I believe. Yes, and amen your life. Whatever problem, whatever challenge, he has the power to turn everything around. We're going to pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for the prayer you have taught us. Father, Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Grant us grace to do your will on earth as it is done in heaven. Lord, deliver us from temptation. Deliver us from evil. Let your people have the grace and the glory and the godliness. That will move on and on and on in the strength of the Lord. Any need in every life, supply. Any sickness, any pain, take them away. Answer by your power power from heaven. Do good in every life. Let all your children have confidence in you. When the Lord shall come, they'll find everyone ready. Ready to go to the everlasting kingdom. Confirm each in every life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.